Next, we have Mimi Ito. Thanks, Dana. So a few years ago, with a great team of researchers, we wrapped up a study investigating how young people learn with new media. And we found, not surprisingly, that almost all teenagers in this country today are highly engaged with new media, whether it's video games, social media, mobile phones, uh, digital media production. But we also found that it was only a small minority of those same young people who were taking to these new media to pursue learning that was connected to their academic subjects, to civic and political engagement, and to career opportunity. So what we're finding is a resilient gap between the kinds of things that authentically interest and engage diverse young people and the kinds of learning that open up opportunity for their success as adults. We've heard a lot of talk and we've worried for generations about the achievement gap, the relationship between educational opportunity and economic opportunity. But my argument for you today is that we can no longer talk about educational opportunity as simply putting kids through standardized pipelines in a digital era when learning is highly distributed uh, across our um, networks and our knowledge ecologies. And so we really need to look at the learning that those of us in this room are engaged in that's interest-driven, inquiry-based, socially connected. And this is what the learning elite looks like in the digital age. I want to talk about a case study of anime fandom that I did as part of the Digital Youth Project. And one young person who is part of the 1% of the digital learning elite, he went by the name Geppetto, and he's a fan and a creator of a particular kind of fan production called Anime Music Videos, or AMVs for short. And these are fan remixes where kids take the original footage and remix it to express their own view on a particular character or series. And so Geppetto, uh, which was his fan name, he um, got interested through his local fandom in Brazil. Um, and there were some local fans, but nobody was interested in video remix as a practice. So he discovered an online community, an English language site called animemusicvideos.org, where all the really good fan anime remixers congregated. And this was a new peer group for him that really propelled his learning and expertise. And he learned to become an amazing video editor. Now, what was unique about Geppetto is he didn't stop there. He actually brought that learning back to school. So he advocated to have AMVs count as part of his art projects in school. And the teachers were so impressed with him that they invited him to start teaching video editing to other kids at his school. So Geppetto is an example of what we're calling a connected learner, a member of the 1% of today's learning elite who's able to pursue his interests in an area of passion and affinity who's able to find a supportive peer group of expertise that supports that interest in learning, and who's able to make that learning consequential in institutions that open up opportunity for him in his adult life. Now, Geppetto is unusually resourceful, but with guidance, support, with invitations, like you saw with Geppetto's teacher, many more young people can achieve these learning experiences, and the online world offers us a ton of resources to help us guide kids in this way. A few examples, Code Academy, sites that are creating educational resources on difficult subjects and also building social supports for people to create affinity groups and peer relations around that learning. Peer-to-peer -peer you. <laughs> uh, Philippe will be talking about it, but similar model of empowering peers to connect around open educational resources. And there's more and more of those resources online because passionate hobbyists in every area embodying every form of expertise, are creating their own YouTube videos to help people learn. One of my favorites is Sean Ploss, the screencaster for the really difficult game StarCraft II, who's built a ton of educational content and a community to help kids learn the game. We know not only need inf uh, content, we need infrastructure, like Mozilla's open badging infrastructure, to make learning visible, transferable, uh, acknowledged across multiple settings of kids' lives. Um, an experiment that I've been involved in together with my collaborator, Tara Brown, to connect uh, students and coaches on the internet around areas of interest. So in today's networked age, it's becoming increasingly difficult not to recognize that everyone is a teacher, a learner, an expert, and that we need to come together as a coalition around a vision of learning that isn't about pushing all kids down the same narrow pipeline to success, a pipeline that most kids will fail at. 
but about radically expanding the entry points, the pathways, the ways of recognizing diverse learning, diverse interests. ConnectedLearning.tv is our invitation to you to help us build this coalition. Thank you.